America failed miserably during that campaign. Uh, on what I uh, reported out of Chicago with his, his, his private life and now with this, his background with the agency, this should have all, this was all available back in, 19, uh, in uh, 2008. And, and and no one, you know, pursued it because everybody was listening to this brilliant order. And, you know, beware, beware of these brilliant orders. History is replete with them, and they've turned out to be uh, nothing more than demagogues when they've gotten into office. Uh, we know many cases of it uh, throughout throughout uh, recent and, and even ancient history where that's happened. Continuing, there's a lot of other areas of your detailed three-part series that we haven't covered yet. I kind of recap it, get into some other areas and connections we didn't go over. And then when we talked last night, you said you're still doing more research. There's even more, that there's mountains of this. And just every place you turn, CIA, 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 CIA. Well, let's look at his, fa uh, his father, Barack Sr., who was brought over in this airlift Africa project. Uh, now, his, his mentor in Kenya, who was assassinated in 1969, Tom Amboya, uh, basically selected uh, Barack Sr. and others over more qualified candidates. And I've got a, a, a very obscure Reuters piece from London in 1960 where one of the opposition leaders in Kenya says, wait a minute, some of the people who were passed over had better uh, academic qualifications, uh, better certificates than the people who were selected. Well, it's obvious why they were selected. They were selected, and in the case of Obama Sr., he's married with a kid and one on the way already in Kenya when he arrives in Hawaii, and he, he marries uh, Obama's uh, uh, mother, who's just graduated from, from uh, high school. Uh, it, it's very clear that this was some sort of a CIA operation uh, to get those two together. Um, you know, you got to wonder what kind of parent would, uh, would you know, put their, their own child up for auction uh, for, because the agency finds it, uh, it, it, it's important to do. So, um, but Amboya is interesting because he basically was spying for the CIA at all these Pan-African meetings, and basically he was uh, trying to limit the influence of some of the leftist African leaders who were thought to be in the pocket of the Soviet Union and, and uh, Communist China at the time, uh, and, and particularly uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, who was also overthrown in 1966 in a CIA coup, just one year after Sukarno was overthrown in Indonesia with the help of Lolo Satoro, Barack's stepfather, and whatever work his mother was doing for USAID and, uh, and, and other entities uh, in Indonesia. Now, we talked last night, uh, and, and I said... It seems to me that they knew that they would build him up as this messianic leader. And then they study societal movements, individual psychology, mass psychology. The, the architects know that he would then not deliver uh, the milk and honey and the restored economy and the end of torture, the end of wars with his advisors and who put him in power. They were always planning uh, to... Uh, you know, not deliver any of his promises and then politically destroy him. And uh, you concurred uh, with me. So I want you to expand on your view. What was their plan for Barry Sitaro, a.k.a. Barack Obama? And, 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 and what is their master plan uh, encompass uh, for the nation and, 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 and for their front puppet? More balkanization, more division, uh, selling Africa on AFRICOM. Uh, or Afrikan being set up. Uh, I mean, what's the overall program with Plan Obama? Well, you know, the CIA regularly uh, uh, uses people who are called futurists. Now, this isn't the weird kind of thing where people look in. These are these are uh, subject area experts who try to look to see where technology, where politics, where population, where demographics will be. 20, 30 years into the and future. And they seek to steer it. They seek to already know what people are going to want to do, well, where culture right. is going to bring them, so they can be pre-positioned to dominate those systems. That's what Google is. So if we go back in time to 1960, we're looking at the CIA, looking at the demographic changes of the United States. 
uh, increasing African American population. I, I don't think they really banked on the uh, uh, increase in the Hispanic population. Uh, obviously, that came later. But well, wait a minute. It's come out that the Ford Foundation billions, Bill and Melinda Gates, tens of millions to Macha and La Raza, uh, Ford Foundation going back 60 years creating those groups. Right. Well, I think the one thing, because of the civil rights movement, uh, they were looking at, look, Martin Luther King was the uh, leader of the uh, African-American uh, group uh, movement, the people in this country. Uh, he broke with Johnson in 67 over Vietnam, steered very hard to the left. And uh, as a CIA, I'm sure said, God, we can't, if we're going to get a leader, we can't have a Malcolm X. We can't have a Martin Luther King Jr. We have to make sure that when, it, when we have one, in, in line to become president, somebody that we can uh, we can basically control. Let me back you anyone. up. Margaret Sanger in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, on record in public letters uh, with the Rockefeller Foundation saying, we've got to pose as liberals, get the black leaders in place so we can abort most of them, and they've been successful. 51% of blacks never make it out of utero. They're murdered in the womb. Uh, so they did that. And they talk about uh, controlling black leaders by financing them. So we know that that's their strategic plan. And and Martin Luther King got off the reservation, so they took him out. Well, absolutely. And um, so you look back in 1960, and uh, it, is it beyond the pale to consider the fact that they may have wanted to groom somebody from the, a very early age, like a baby, uh, uh, you know, you've got his parents and his grandparents basically in their pocket. And then you've got this stuff about behavioral science work at the University of Hawaii. Uh, there's just so many gaps in the histories of not only uh, the president, but also uh, his mother, uh, his father, uh, his, his grandfather, and his grand grandmother on his mother's side. So um, when you see gaps like that, now you, you can look at any other president. We those families we knew way too much. My God, Roger Clinton, uh, Billy Carter. But in this case, we have these significant gaps uh, in their histories. And, and I think that's something that people should be concerned about. Wayne, I think that's the key that you just hit on. You have all this effort to cover up the past. You've got CIA connections uh, to your left, your right, forward and backwards at every level. Uh, you have got uh, the fact that they've spent so much time, not just in the present, but going back decades covering up his true providence uh, and, and where he comes from. And, and, and then, as you said, all these intelligence and corporate uh, intelligence and foundation connections. And now he's the president. And we know they had these programs to go in, not just here, but all over the world and, and recruit leaders. I mean, the British recruited Hitler. That's declassified uh, in the mid 20s and took him from nowhere and funded the, the uh, National Socialists to make him their leader. And, and the Milner group bragged, we're going to build this guy up and he's going to tear Europe up. And uh, then we're going to be able to come in and rebuild it and take it over. I mean, this is their long-term strategic thinking. And when you look at Obama and everything he's done, it's clear uh, this guy is a total betrayer of everything he claims to be. Well, you remember last November when old man Bush, um, uh, H.W., 41, and Jeff Bush paid what was called a courtesy call to the White House. We were not even told what that was about, a courtesy call. That's all we were told. Well, you know, you've got the guy who the, the CIA headquarters is named after and his uh, son visiting Obama. And uh, it's just, oh, we were in town. We thought we'd stop by. Uh, look, that doesn't happen at the White House. I mean, uh, those Salahis aside, uh, you don't get into the White House unless you have a reason to be there. So... I mean, obviously, you're saying their plan was to have a controlled asset who was supposedly African-American in there. That's clear. But how is their plan going? I mean, did they mean for him to be a messianic leader and be successful? And has their uh, attempted launch of this uh, African-American Napoleon failed? Or did they plan to just use him as a distraction and then destroy him? I think he's given them everything they want. Look, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom is now Operation New Dawn. I mean, right out of George Orwell's Newspeak lexicon, we're, we're shown pictures of convoys leaving Iraq. 50,000 troops are going to stay, and we're going to see an increase in contractors. What's that all about? By the way, I have the New York Times today on that. They say 
oh, private contractors and intelligence operatives will now run the government. So this is a practice run for the U.S. and other countries where they don't just stage coups. They come in and put in their entire apparatus through these giant armored embassies and control everything and just have plainclothes death squads running the nation. Well, that's right. And, and look, look what Obama, right after he comes in, he, you know, he allows the CIA to overthrow President Zelaya in Honduras. He wants to build seven military bases in Colombia, and the Constitutional Court of Colombia just shot that down. So, you know, what Obama wants to do is now being shot down by the court in Colombia. I mean, this guy is owned lock, stock, and barrel by, by these intelligence, you know, the intelligence community, because he's not said no to them ever. I mean... Patriot Act, still in effect. Uh, we have an uh, 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 increase in uh, electronic surveillance. We got these deals between the CIA and Google and, 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 and NSA and Google and, and Microsoft and everything else. And so he's, he's allowing he, – he ran on openness. Uh, the Freedom of Information Act is still uh, not being implemented. It's still backlogged. Requests are not being honored. Uh, so, I mean, everything he ran on, he has lied. Uh, on very fundamental constitutional issues. And we were told that he taught constitutional law at the University of Chicago Law School. I don't know what, which law he was teaching, because when you look at his actions, it looks like he's teaching the Constitution of North Korea, not of the United States of America. You know, I'd laugh, but it isn't funny. This is really happening. And, I mean, this is really the private offshore corporate takeover of society. They're setting up... They're fusion centers run by the CIA in every major city. They're federalizing the police. They're training U.S. SWAT teams in Iraq for cordon, for shutting down cities, for gun confiscations. At the G20 in Pittsburgh, uh, my employee got arrested, Rob Dew. He, he saw people being let off trucks with bags on their heads. The Army would then, when they had to go to the bathroom, to follow them and then make fun of them. And, and, and this was all encouraged, like something right out of 1984, and this, they had private snatch and grab teams in front of news cameras on purpose, grabbing activists, putting bags on their heads. Now it happened in Toronto. Same thing in England. They are globally deploying a scientifically developed corporate oppression, a corporate black op tyranny. And uh, I mean, clearly, this is the complete shadow takeover. And now it's out in the open. I mean, this is so illegal, Wayne. Well, let me say another thing about Obama. You know, he's, he has had scheduled two trips to visit Indonesia. Both trips have been postponed. Um, you know, I think he, he, he knows that when he arrives in Jakarta, the, the Indonesian press, uh, some foreign press, will start looking at his uh, time there. And I don't think they want that kind of attention on that. And I think that's one reason. Now, he's always said he's had other priorities. I think the oil spill was one reason. Well, no, that's another made. issue, Wayne. You keep bringing up great points. It's, it's admitted he was in Indonesia longer than he said. Then he lied about being in the Muslim school. It's fine if he's a Muslim, but why lie about it? I mean, everything he's ever told us is a lie. You went over that earlier. I mean, when the parents met, when the grandparents met, when all this happened, we learn it's all a fiction. Well, I and mean, the other thing I discovered is when they were, uh, before they went to Hawaii, they were in Mercer, Island, Seattle, in the state of Washington. And, and uh, I did find uh, in a list of these uh, agent uh, CIA people uh, the name of the uh, chief engineer for uh, Boeing. And he was, his area of primary assignment was Mercer Island. Now, uh, Madeline Dunham worked for the Boeing Corporation during World War II in Wichita, Kansas. So, it's, he's the only guy listed with the agency in Mercer Island. You know, we've got to figure the time frame here. Um, you know, uh, you know, you could, conspiracy or coincidence, but I, I think that's much more than a coincidence.